OS Climate. OS Climate is establishing an open source collaboration community to build a software platform that will dramatically boost global capital flows into climate change, mitigation, and resilience. As a part of AI Center of Excellence at Red Hat, we are contributing to this project and have a demonstration for how to use Open Data Hub and Operate First Cloud to perform data engineering, from data collection, ingestion, to visualization. Hey, everyone. I'm Akanksha Duggal, and I'm a data scientist in the AI Center of Excellence at Red Hat. Let's take a look at the workflow we follow. So for this project, the data is currently stored in Ceph S3 storage. In order to get started, we will extract this data from Ceph S3 using a Jupyter Hub environment. In the first notebook, Demo 1 Create Tables, we will show how to read raw data files from a Ceph S3 storage and ingest them as a table into an SQL database engine that is Trino. After exporting the data in table format to Trino, we will access these tables using the other Jupyter notebook, that is Demo1 join tables, and join two tables on Trino to create a new table so as to perform further analysis and create visualizations using the Apache Superset Visualization Dashboard. And to ensure that we are running all these Jupyter Notebooks in sequential and automated fashion, we will be using Elira Notebook Pipelines Editor and Qflow Pipelines. Let's take a detailed look at this workflow. Hey everyone, my name is Oindula Chatterjee and I'm a data scientist in the Team AI Center of Excellence and in this quick demo, I'm going to go over the notebooks in the AICOE OS Climate project for the demo one. And for this demo, I'm going to show how we use Jupyter Hub to do the various data collection and data processing steps with our notebooks and how we use Elira and Kubeflow pipelines to automate the running of these various notebooks. So let's take a look at the notebooks which constitute demo one. I'm on the OS Climate Jupyter Hub and to start a Jupyter Hub notebook server, I'll select the AICOE OS Climate demo notebook image. I'll select a medium sized container and hit start server. So this should automatically spawn up my Jupyter Hub notebook server. So once this has completed spawning, I should see a clone of the GitHub repository within my Jupyter Hub notebook server with today's timestamp. So as you can see here, this particular directory is the clone of the GitHub repository. Uh, in order to navigate to the notebooks, I can go to the notebooks directory, demo one, and here are the two notebooks which constitute demo one. So let's go over the first notebook. So this notebook is responsible for reading some raw data files from S3 storage and performing some processing on those and ingesting them as a table into Trino, which is a SQL database engine. And uh, these tables can be used for further analysis or processed further in the following notebooks and then also imported as visualizations in Apache Superset. So to start with, uh, we outline how we can define environment variables to run these notebooks successfully. So basically, you need to create a credentials.n file at the root of the repository, which should consist of two sets of credentials. So the first set of credentials are the S3 credentials, uh, which are credentials to um, get access to the S3 bucket like the S3 endpoint, the bucket name, the access key, the secret key, etc. And the second set of credentials are the Trino SQL database credentials, like the Trino user, the password to authenticate you, the Trino host, at port, etc. Uh, so once you have access to these credentials, you can um, create a credentials.n file at the root of this project repository, uh, which can be further uh, used to run this notebook. So we are also capturing some metrics during the execution of this notebook in an, when it's executed in an automated fashion in uh, using Kubeflow pipelines. 
So we are uh, providing a path to the metrics file, which will capture all the metrics during execution here. Uh, we are also loading the credentials that we just saved in the credentials.n file. And we are creating an S3 client, which basically connects you to the um, S3 bucket uh, and accesses all the uh, environment variables that we defined in credentials.env. So once we have done that, uh, we will download two sample data sets from S3 storage. Uh, the first data set is the urgent EM data sample emissions targets December 2020 CSV. And the other sample data set which is present on S3 is the urgent EM data sample December 2020 CSV. Uh, so we download both of these CSVs from S3 storage and read them as pandas data frames for further analysis. We also perform some basic cleanup and processing to make sure that the CSV is correctly imported into a data frame format. We perform some type conversions on the uh, CSV column so that uh, they are uh, more suitable for further analysis and visualizations. Uh, so once we have done that, this is what the structure of the data frame uh, looks like. So the first data frame consists of about 14 columns, uh, 15 columns. Uh, the columns are like the company name, the base year, end year, start year, uh, the target ambition, uh, target reduction, achieve reduction, and the data types uh, range from string, float, integer, um, and this gives the count of the uh, not null values in the particular column. Uh, so once we have the data frames ready, we also um save these process data frames as parquet files back on s3 storage uh, so these parquet files are called um, emissions table one dot parquet and emissions table two dot parquet and um, we also capture some metrics during um, saving these to s3 storage such as such as the time taken to upload this to s3 storage and we save that in um, some variable names like upload df1 time, upload df2 time, and so on. Um, further, uh, once we have um, the two data frames ready, uh, we also want to create uh, um, two tables from those data frames to SQL tables and um, ingest it into Trino. So in order to do that, we create a connection to the Trino database um, using the Trino API and we uh, use the credentials that we uh, previously defined in the credentials.n file here uh, in order to do so. Uh, we automatically generate the table schema from the pandas data frame and we uh, run two create table SQL queries in order to create the tables ITR emissions one version two and ITR emissions two uh, and push them to the um, Trino database. So uh, during the execution of these queries, we are also capturing some other metrics such as the um, time taken to execute these queries um, so that we can capture these metrics um, during the automatic running of these notebooks. Uh, so once we have created these two tables and ingested them on Trino, we are also checking uh, if the tables were successfully created and if they're actually present uh, by running some select star queries here. Um, finally, we aggregate all the metrics that we are capturing throughout this notebook into a um, metrics dictionary. And then we uh, make sure to JSON serialize it and uh, dump those in the metrics file. So these should be automatically captured during uh, the Kubeflow pipeline execution of this notebook. Uh, so this was the first notebook. Now let's look at the second notebook. Um, so the second notebook, which is called Demo1 Join Tables, is actually responsible from, uh, for um, collecting the two tables that we just um, ingested into Trino and uh, performing a join on those two tables and creating a new table and um, um, 
pushing it back to Trino. So um, in this notebook as well, we are um, uh, making sure that we uh, have a credentials.env file with the required credentials and because we are making connection to Trino in this notebook as well. And we are also um, uh, providing the metrics file path to capture the uh, metrics during the execution of the notebook. Uh, again, we load the credentials.env file within this notebook and we also initialize uh, a Trino connection to the Trino database uh, using the Trino host, Trino port and Trino user uh, environment variable files which we uh, environment variables which we just defined in the credentials.env file. Um, finally, here we are uh, uh, showing the columns or reading the columns from the uh, first table that we created and uh, then we are writing a join query. Um, we are performing a left join on the ITR emissions one table and the ITR emissions two table and uh, here, uh, once we execute the join query, we are also capturing the um, uh, running time or the query running time and capturing that as a metric. And we are also confirming whether the uh, query uh, actually successfully executed and if the table is actually present using a select star query. And we are capturing the two metrics here and against dumping it in a JSON, JSON serialized um uh, manner onto uh, the metrics file so these are the two notebooks that we uh, want to execute as a part of demo one and in order to execute these notebooks in a sequential and an automated fashion we have defined um, an elira pipeline which is able to run these two notebooks sequentially using kubeflow pipelines and automate the execution of these notebooks so we have already created a sample Elira pipeline using these two notebooks, uh, which is the demo one create table and the demo one uh, join table notebooks. So in order to get Kubeflow pipelines running, we need to set up the Kubeflow pipelines runtime image and the Kubeflow pipelines runtime configuration. So in order to set up the runtime image, we can use this icon on the left-hand side panel of Jupyter Hub which takes us to the various runtime images that exist. We have already created a demo one AICOE OSC runtime image, and let's go over that to see how you can recreate this. So we have provided a name to this runtime image, an optional description, and the source consists of the image name that points to the uh, image on the query registry. Uh, so this image should basically consist of all the dependencies that are needed to run the notebooks. Um, within this Kubeflow pipeline. So this is the Kubeflow pipeline's runtime image and let's now go over the runtime configuration. So uh, clicking on this uh, runtimes icon should take you to the existing runtimes. We have already created a demo one AICOE OSC runtime configuration. And as you can see here, this consists of a name and then the URL here points to the Kubeflow pipeline's API endpoint and we can select the uh, Kubeflow Pipelines engine here. We are running um, it using Tecton, so that's what we would select here. We also provide um, the cloud object storage credentials, uh, which are needed to exchange the files um, from these running notebooks. So we are providing the uh, cloud object storage endpoint URL, the username, the password, and the bucket name. We can also use a cloud object storage uh, credential secret here, uh, which is basically a secret uh, which is contained in the OpenShift namespace, which uh, consists of, uh, which points to the access key and the secret key. So providing a credential secret here will prevent any um, access keys or secret keys to get exposed during the execution of the runtime. Uh, so once we have um, added all the uh, environment variables for the uh, public cloud object storage bucket here, we can save and close. So now one final step before we trigger the Elira pipeline, uh, we need to set up the notebook properties for each notebook in the pipeline. So in order to do so, you can click on the notebook 
uh, go to properties and this should let us um, um, select the runtime image that we previously created, provide the uh, runtime CPU and memory uh, that we need to run this notebook. We can also add any optional file dependencies uh, which this notebook depends on. Um, here we also need to provide the various environment variables which are needed to run this notebook in automation. Uh, so these are the same environment variable files which you set up in the credentials.n file such as the S3 endpoint, the bucket access key, secret key and the Trino database engine um, access credentials. So once you have added all of that, you can save it and uh, you would need to do that uh, the same step for the second notebook by going into properties and um, basically adding all the same uh, credentials here. So we have already done this for both the notebooks in a separate pipeline. And in order to now trigger the pipeline from the Elira UI, we can hit the run button on the top left side of the panel. Uh, we will provide this uh, pipeline uh, name uh, and we can call this demo one. We'll also select uh, the Kubeflow pipelines runtime configuration, which we cre previously created called, called demo one AICOE OSC and hit OK. So once this pipeline has been submitted, by clicking on Run Details, you are taken to the Kubeflow Pipelines UI, which should um, take you to the particular run uh, within this experiment. So as you can see here, um, this node represents the first running notebook in this pipeline. In order to access any logs during the running of this notebook, we can uh, click on the notebook and go to logs and this can help us debug anything which went uh, wrong within the uh, during the execution of this notebook. And uh, basically once the notebook has successfully completed executing, you should see a green check mark like this next to the notebook. Uh, so now as you can see, both the notebooks seem to have completed executing successfully. Now, in order to see any runtime metrics that were captured during the execution of the notebooks, we can go to run output. We are capturing various metrics like the number of rows in the different tables, the time to run uh, the create table queries, the time to upload the data frames onto S3 storage, the number of columns uh, in the different tables. So these runtime metrics can also be used to compare different runs amongst each other and see how a run went in comparison to the previous runs. Um, and this can be especially useful to track machine learning experiments. So this was a quick example of how to use Elira and Kubeflow pipelines to automate the notebooks in demo one. Next, we will move over and see how we can create visualizations from these saved data tables and uh, visualize them on an Apache Supercent dashboard. So we saw how we use Jupyter Notebooks to interact with the data that is actually stored in Ceph and then store this data in tabular format in Trino. Let's take a look at how this data set looks like on Trino UI. So we go to Trino and try to log in Once logging in, we will see the ODH Trino. Here we see there are various databases. So the one that we are working on is the OSC Data Commons dev. Inside this, uh, we are using the urgent tem. And inside that, we have some tables. If I click on this, we can see these are the following tables that have been stored. So the last one that we created was the ITR emissions joint. If we click on it, we'll be able to see the entire data set that was available. We can also use SQL to query and find out if the data set exists or not. So a simple query like select star from select your database and select Argentum dot ITR emissions joined and say we want to see only five rows we're gonna run it and this is how 
it prints and shows that this data set was exported to Trino. And once we are through this, we would use these data sets to do some visualizations using Superset. So this is how a typical Superset dashboard would look like. Before we jump into what we are visualizing here, I would like to take a minute to tell you how you could link your data sets from Trino to Superset. We can see this tab data. We select data sets here. We click on the button data set here and we select our database that is the OSC Data Commons Dev and Selector Schema. Then we select the table name. Uh, we can use the last one, sample test, and click on the button add. After this, we can see that the data set was added to the list of data sets. We have a bunch of data sets that we already imported. And now let's take a look at how you can create a, uh, create a chart out of any of the data sets that you have imported on Superset. So we go to charts, we click on adding a chart and the data set we can choose here is uh, say ITR emissions joined. And then um, let's try to make a pie chart and click on the button, create new chart here. So once we do this, uh, we see um, a bunch of things that we could customize and make a graph out of it. So on your left side, you'll be able to see the various columns available. And the visualization type that we selected was a pie chart. We would want to maybe visualize what all countries or regions we have the data for. So we will try to group it by countries and then count for each country. We save it and then we run the query. After we run the query, we can see various con uh, the data being classified or grouped by various countries whose data was available. We can see like a lot of companies belong to the United States region. Similarly, we could also do um, the classification for say region. And when we go click on region and we run the query, we can see we have the data for three regions here. And this is how you could create a simple chart. And to save this and export this to a dashboard, you will click on the button Save here and give a chart name, say, region-wise classification, and add it to the dashboard that we have already created. Or you could create a new dashboard as well. And then click on the button Save, and it will automatically export it to the dashboard. Now let's take a look at the dashboard. So we go to dashboards and the dashboard demo that we have created is the OS climate demo one. So starting from the top, we have various filters that you could use to classify, uh, to categorize by companies, regions, or countries. So we can see the data for various companies here and you could choose one of them and then a particular region that you would want to visualize for. Similarly, you could also narrow it down to a particular country as well. So the kind of visualizations we have here are what are the various companies whose data we have, then another pie chart that displays various scopes for each company, then what is the coverage for each scope using a bar chart, another bar chart that displays the base year's GHG emissions for each scope, and they are categorized with the various coverage types. And the one that interests me the most, the reduction ambition versus achieved. This bar chart technically shows what was the reduction ambition versus the reduction achieved. So we can see for a particular company that if the achieved reduction was more or less than the reduction ambition. And so on and so forth, we can have a bunch of metrics that we could visualize using the Apache superset.